Hello and welcome to my world of crochet. My name is Dina and uh, today I'm here with you for another a yarn talk video. And as always, we cannot really talk yarn and crochet without me having my faithful mug of tea. And today that is just a very plain Earl Grey with a hint of a bergamot. So it's just this black tea, very classic Earl Grey flavor. Keep it simple. And it's still like a tea that's a bit yeah, comfy in taste. So, um, I have done a fair bit, I think, since last Jan Talk video. Um, at least lots of things are going on at the moment. Um, but I haven't finished projects yet. I would say I'm slowly getting closer, but it will still be a bit before uh, the next project is finished. Uh, though that said, I do have the ideas of starting on a new, which is slightly a smaller project that I might have finished for next Jan Talk video. But that's a different story. We will take that later. Um, I usually talk about these projects in chronological order, with the exception of if I finish projects, I usually do them first in the episode. And I haven't, so we are going straight into the projects I'm working on and doing that in the chronological order as to when I started them. Um, then we are starting to talk about, well, we should first talk about the Oasis Cardigan. Oasis Cardigan is a design by Drops. You can find that one on Gown Studio. You can also find it here in the description box down below where I have linked to all the patterns that I am mentioning during this yarn talk, either linking to tutorials or um, to written patterns. That is, um, if there is any, sometimes I do create things where I do not have patterns because it comes out of my head. Um, but in this case, um, the Oasis Cardigan is by Drops Design. I have absolute respect for those. But, and I realize I don't even have the papers here. I should have had the papers, but you have seen them so many times because I started on this cardigan last summer and then I worked on it and then I shelved it when I was about to add arm gaps because I wasn't completely sure how to continue working on it afterwards. Um, ended up taking the project with me to my mom. I frogged it twice even because I found a different way of doing it, which was quicker. Um, but yeah, so I ended up taking with me home for Christmas, talked with my mom about it. We found a solution. I got um, gaps in and now I'm adding arms because that was actually paused a little bit as well because I was a little bit unsure on how to best approach that because the pattern says um, chain X, depending on the size you're needing, um, and then work in um like chain two and then chain two and then skip two so basically chain four skip two stitches work in double crochet chain two skip two or something like that or three work in double crochets um all the way around until you have x amount of gaps a few weeks ago i had done that i had compared that first part of the circle i think i did three rounds um compared that with a gap of the sleeves and i'm like if I'm gonna add this, it's gonna look really weird because I uh, it's just not big enough. Um, and then I was like, but maybe it's also just easier to actually work it on the project, even though the pattern says to make the sleeve differently and then sew them on. Why not skip the seam of sewing them on when I can crochet them on directly? I will have to say working on it is a bit unhandy because right now the project is like this. And I have to turn it around every so often because of the arm goes around. Um, so it's not like a convenience project for in the couch, I think. Uh, but that's okay. Um, that's not what I would accept, accept, expect either. Um, you see right now there is some orange. That is my marker thread to keep track on um, where it is here under my arm. So where I need to decrease. Um, I've also found adding in them directly onto the sleeve. I haven't done that much yet, but I actually like it because I think I can better adapt the pattern to fit my exact personality um, because I will basically, what I'm doing right now is I'm working on the go. Um, so every, not every, every round, but every three rounds, I check how far I am. And I'm slowly getting, I think, to a point where I need to decrease. 
Um, normally the pattern would say after four centimeters or something like that, you need to decrease. But if I do that and I will do the amount of decreases, I'm afraid that somewhere here, it's going to be too small for me. So, you know, um, it's not the first time I adapt patterns to fit me on the go. So yeah. Um, I've so far done eight rounds of the arms. I write down here. I just put lines on a little post-it, um, piece of paper because what is, is I need to make the exact same on the other side. So I don't need to constantly fit on the go when I get there because I am luckily uh, the same on both sides, you know, like split me in the middle and I'm pretty identical. Um, but you know, when I have it all written down, I don't need to constantly fit, um, constantly do the fittings. Let's see, it's here. So um, you can see here actually how the arms is coming along. And that's why I keep the trailing yarn to keep track of where it is and where I have to do the decreases. This would be then the um, front part. So this would be like towards the chest. So if I would wear it, I could take it partially on, I guess, just to show you guys. It would be right now something like this. And I slowly have to start to do some decreases because it gets really airy and fluffy. But I just wanted to make sure in the beginning, because it starts really low here, that there is lots of space to actually have good movement ratio. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much where we are right now. So I need to slowly start decreasing a few rounds. Um, because of course I don't want a big flare. Well, I don't mind a flared um, sleeve, but I don't want it too flared because if I want to use it uh, towards the window, it's more difficult to get into my jacket, basically. Um, and um, this is so far, this first ball, so it's not like I've used a lot yet um, to compare them. Um, and this might be a bit squeezed as well, but um, maybe I have enough yarn at least to finish. I think I have enough yarn to finish all my um, sleeves, but the problem is really how much yarn do I have if I want to add um, the front pieces because I have two front pieces to kind of like increase it further towards the front. Um, I do not think that I do have enough yarns for that. And if I want to add that, I will have to buy more. Um, so what I decided a couple of weeks ago is basically finish the arms, fit it, see if you like it, see if you want to add more or not. Um, maybe check with you guys what you think when we get there. The yarn I'm using, of course, is also drop yarn because it's a drops pattern. You can use all the yarn stand drops, but it seems really fitting. It is paper merino mix, so it's 100% superwash treated merino wool. And it's very soft and wearable and friendly. And I'm so much looking forward to, um, to when this is done. I really am. Um, because this is a wool I can wear towards my skin. It's not itchy. And I have sensitive skin. Um... The balls here um, from Drops are 50 gram balls, so that's 1.75 ounces um, to 175 meters of yarn, so that's 191 yards. It's a fine weight yard, and I've been using my 3.5 millimeter crochet hook for the project. Um, this is my soft touch from uh, um, Clover. And uh, and yeah, um, I found that I do enjoy those hooks. I should probably make a review of those as well. But um, that's the project there. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with the pro process of my, my Oasis cardigan. Um, and I think the second sleeve des definitely will go a lot faster because I'm 100% sure of what I'm doing. It's just need to be a copy. And that's of course why I write it down so I don't make mistakes. Um, then the next project chronologically is my, uh, inlines alpaca poncho. And that is a design by 10 to 12 and it is a hobby pattern. It's a hobby paid pattern. Hobby plus will get to you for free. If you have a hobby plus membership, um, again, description box down below. The only difference is that I'm not using the drops alpaca, um, not the drops, <laughs> Hobbies, a wheel of packer yarn. Instead, I am using Yarnat's uh, Flowers Alpaca, which is basically the same yarn. Um, just that was my crochet hook. 
Um, and it's under my chair. Just a moment. So that went on the floor because I had not seen that I had wrapped it up in the project. It's my five millimeter crochet hook that I'm using. I don't have much yarn left. Well, I do have something, but the cake is slowly caving a bit in because as you can see, it's it's getting out here from the center. It's There isn't that much left. Um, but what we can do is show you the label of the cake. Yarnat Flower Alpaca. There are two cakes into the poncho. I am working on only adding the last many rounds and now I'm stuck. So working on adding the last many rounds uh, to this. I did a couple of more rounds since last time. This is my project for when I am um, when I'm at the couch, when I'm traveling um, in the car, uh, even though it's slowly going to pick too easily take with me in the car. But it's definitely like my couch and my easy mindless project. I've also done it a few times when I've done my lives. Uh, I don't have lives that often. And I'm still trying to find a good day for um, my celebration in life for my 1K subscribers milestone because there will also be giveaways in that live. Um, so as soon as I know, I will notify it and I will set it up here on YouTube, of course. So for you all to put it in your agendas. Um, but yeah, so let's see if I can actually hold it up. Um, the cowl I already added. The pattern says to add the cowl last. I chose to start with it um, from the second skein after. So well, I, I first did the first part of the skein and then I did on the cowl and then I added to finish it up. Um, so here I ended uh, the first skein. And then I took the second skein, I started adding the cowl, and you can see about here is the addition of the cowl. Um, and then I took the outer, uh, inner part and I started adding it on here, and I'm just basically going on until there's no more yarn left. Uh, I just need to make sure that I can actually complete the round, um, because it would be a shame if I couldn't. And that's it, and then I'll be done. Um, it's going really well, I think. It is really going absolutely gorgeously well. Um, if I wanna do it sideways, I can. And it's very nice and warm. Right now I cover um, my chest if it's sideways, so that's nice. I do cover a good piece of the arm. So in that sense, it's quite perfect right here. Um, and if I do it on the towards the front, so if I flip this one around, that is, if it wants to work with me, then I'm definitely covering my shoulders, but I would like them to be a little more covered or I just need to option to, to wear it sideways, but there is still yarn to go. Uh, we're still working on it, but I really think it has a great and wonderful look. Um, and I have a feeling that in the future you will see me wear this a lot. Um, it is nice and comfy. Um, definitely. So that was my inlines poncho, which I think is going absolutely gorgeously, wonderfully well. Um, there shouldn't be any doubts about that. So I also have, just trying to keep track. Yes, next project is um, my um, blanket. It's my Mosiac blanket by Anke Wintermans. Anke Wintermans is a Dutch designer um, and uh, it's named Fleur. The blanket that is and i did another two rounds since last time it is the type of overlay mosaic style this makes me at round 23 of 129 i have ages to go i started on this around new year's and i know i'm not very quick on it but it's also i haven't worked on it every week and sometimes i do round or two a week and sometimes i do a few more 
generally I know that um, I just have so many things I want to work on and this is really something where I need to sit down and focus on it when I do it. Um, but I did two more rounds this last week. So I did a right white round and another um, Bordeaux Burgundy, I think it's called Burgundy. Um, and it's, it's, it's starting to increase its size, so that's really nice. But I have a lot to go. Um, we will have the white here should decrease a bit less, but then it's increasing here on the outer edges. Um, the background color is the burgundy and the white or cream white will go through the whole pattern. We will in about 24 rounds or so, I do believe it is, the burgundy will change to a red and then eventually will change towards greens. Um, I think it's an absolutely gorgeous pattern. So I bought one of the, I bought a package from Wool Plaza, Yarn Plaza, Yarn Plaza, uh, dot .nl um, or maybe dot .com. I don't rem I don't remember if their English version of it is dot .com, but it's called um, Wool Plain uh in Dutch. It's a web store that's um, selling lots of different yarns including this yarn package uh, from Stylecraft DK yarns. That is the yarns that Anke Windemans used for her blanket. So basically you can buy this. It's like a, you can buy a crochet package, including pattern and everything. The only difference is I bought the yarn at Wolplein and she created this pattern together with Wolplein. Um, but I bought the pattern from Anke Self on Ravelry because that was actually cheaper. Um, like a euro, maybe. Um, every tiny cent counts uh, in the set itself when you can do a little bit of savings. And then I definitely know that the money is going directly to Anker herself. And I think that's fairly deserved because this pattern in is absolutely gorgeous. Um, Overlay mosaic works in the way that um, uh, you do either single crochets or double crochets, depending on where you are in the pattern. If we look in here, you can see here that the burgundy here is um, double crochets, but here when you see them on top of the whites, it's single crochets, but it's in the back loop only. And the double crochets goes into the front loop of the previous round. Um, so that's basically, yeah, how it goes. Um, and there's this wonderful pattern that you need to follow and keep track of. And this is about, you really you need to keep track of your counts. Um, before you start and I usually and that's why it's a lot of counting but I make sure that I'm at the right location by usually I use the center because the center shows me it's it's symmetrical right so it's kind of like mirrored um, so I know where the center is and then from the center I can easily figure out where I should be and then I count towards here to ensure that I also um, don't miss stitches it's um it's a project and uh, if I'm happy, I'm, I'm, if I'm finished with this before the end of the year, I'll be really happy, but I'm not expecting to be finished anytime 2024. So this is a project that you eventually will see a lot. Um, just like the Isis Cardigan, except the Isis Cardigan is not far from being done, I think. We are really getting closer with that one. So 23 out of 129 on the Fleur Mosaic blanket. I'm quite pleased, to be honest, um, with with how it's looking. Um, in the beginning, when I was making it, I wasn't sure like if it was really going to be that nice as on the photo. But now I'm getting further into the project and I can start to see. Um, I really like it. And it's a nice way of thinking differently and doing things. Um, who knows, maybe I end up designing something myself um, for, for Mosaic Crochet, um, I don't know, but this, so far, I like, it's it's a nice different type of puzzle. Um, but after that, in the start of February, I, um, probably in week two of February even, um, I start, decided to enter a make-along uh, hosted by a Disley Sisters Creations. 
that is a uh, Linda and June in the UK um, link to uh, the video of the rules of this make along in the description box here down below um, this make along is make make a shawl uh, you can crochet or knit so you don't need to knit you can crochet or you don't need to crochet you can knit um, you don't need to be started on February 1st where it started uh, and you don't need to be finished on April 30th where it's going to end you just need to start after February 1st, so on February 1st or later, but you need to be started before April 30th as well. Um, and then, you know, you can enter. And that's what I did. So I decided to make a shawl. I had a shawl that I wanted to make for some time. I had the yarns bought for the Jasmine Tea Shawl by Red Teapot Atelier. The pattern I got uh, from Hobby, uh, as a Hobby Plus pattern, uh, you can also get them on Ravelry, I believe, and she might even also sell them on Etsy. Um, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous designs, what she's making. Uh, right now, though, I am absolutely feeling the fact of there is a lot of puff stitches, and I am not the biggest fan of puff stitches. They just take so long to make. Um, but the, it looks good, like, no, no doubt. Um, if you saw the thumbnail for this video, um, you would see also how far I've gotten on the project so far. And I have finished the colorway 94. I just still need to weave in ends and add the next color. Uh, but that is how we have done it so far. I do a color per week. And this is where we are right now. It's pr practically almost big enough for me to make a small sort of shawl from it. Um, but it's looking absolutely gorgeous. I like how these back posts makes it pop a little bit more. Um, and now we are here where we need to slowly prepare for... Basically, this piece is the same as this light blue piece. So it's repeating. Um, but I need to change color because I'm not having much yarn left. And of course, that's not a logic because those puff stitches, they really do eat some yarn. Um, and I've really been looking at the photo of the pattern and I'm like, it says you need nine skeins, but when I look at the photo, I think there is an extra color added because it doesn't make sense. Otherwise I can't recall the colors hundred percent. Um, that means I might need to add extra yarn, uh, to finish it. Um, but that's not a big issue because if that is going to be the case, I have that yarn upstairs uh, because that will be black uh, and I do have black yarn laying. So I have three more colors to go, probably four. Um, that will be this, oops, let's turn it around. This light green is the next one that's going on. And then it goes into this dagger green and this is like a bottle green. And in case I don't have enough bottle green to finish up the project, I will add black because that seems to be um, a really good way of fixing that. And it's something I do have on stock, so I can fix it by doing that. Um, so theoretically, I have three weeks left before I'm done with this project, because I do a color per week. Uh, you can see how much I have left of the other colors here as well, which is the colors that's been added. Um, so I will have a bunch of scrap yarns, uh, which I'm probably gonna use for maybe some amigurumis. Um, or a new shawl, who knows? Um, but not this one. Um, it's gonna be different type style. Undecided. Um, and that's not super important, but I really adore this. I really do. It definitely needs blocking. You can see that uh, on how it fringes and curls. It goes a lot better as you add rows on because I felt the blue was really fringy as well, but after I added them more, um, it's... Hmm. So I just went out of memory on my recording device, so um, I had to make some space, and therefore I ended this a bit funky. But what I wanted to say is that um, after I added more rows, it's definitely gotten less fringy, um, and the blocking should help it look really nice and straight. It's the same as um, when you look right now, um, from the center to the edge, every time it curls a bit and then you add a few more rows and it straightens out. Um, because I remember when I had done like the first 17, 18 rows, I was really being concerned because I had the feeling it was like slowly curving a bit. 
Um, but yeah, so my next step right now is to add um, the next green, which is the colorway 103. Um, I'm just going to take it out of this bag. So we are going to add this green um, as the next to this project, colorway 103. So um, that should fade over very nicely. I'm just going to keep that one out because I know I am going to need it. Um, and then I should probably cut the yarn and put the more like darker mint away. Um, so awesome. I'm, I'm really happy with my the progress of it. And I think I might want to make a new one um, with maybe a muffin cake or... Or a cotton cake or a twister cake just to see how it looks with um, not necessarily me color coordinating exactly where I wanted to but just to see how it flows um, with a nice cake I think that would be nice and gorgeous as well but that is for a future project and not today um, then I am working on the firefly sweater which is something you guys at the community to help me decided on working on um, I want. I knew that I was going to work on it eventually. I just didn't know when. Uh, for this, I'm using the Soft Sensation yarns from Lamy Yarns. Um, now I took off the label. I am about to add this. Uh, these balls are 25 grams, so um, they are like 0 0.8, not 9, but close to 9, close to 0 0.9 ounces per piece. Um, and there are 200 meters on a ball, so that's about 218 yards or something like that, 17, 18 yards. Um, it's 76% acrylic and 24% polyester. It resembles a bit wool, mohair maybe, but it is super fussy and no animal fibers. So if you have animal allergies, no need to worry here. Um, nice, light, I hold it double. Um, and they recommend knitting needles four and a half to five millimeters, uh, and that is due to the fussiness. Hand wash, do not iron, do not tumble dry, and do not bleach, but you can dry clean. Um, and they are really, as you can see, it is super thin, but because of the fuss, um, it's different. And I hold these two together, and uh, that creates this gorgeous gorgeous yarn you can see here i did a color change i still need to weave in ends i haven't done that yet it's slightly because i'm trying to figure out how much i need uh width wise um and i think i just need to flip it double now um, so i've sort of been following the pattern and sort of not uh, i've been adapting again because i'm not a big fan of crop tops so i added some length um, now I just hope I have enough yarn. I think I did buy extra because when I got the idea, I was like, oh, it's a crop top. I want to buy extra yarn and I got some extra off it. Else I will contact the store where I got the yarns from. It is a Dutch small store. Um, but this is kind of where we are at. And uh, looking at how it would be, uh, this is about center of the shirt that I'm wearing right now. Um, so I think I'm about halfway. Um, and then I'm, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to copy this, mirror it, and then we're done. So uh, I need to start mirroring that, um, and I don't have much left on the green, so I'm about to add green as well. And then, uh, then we're good to go. And then when I've done one full front piece, I need to make a back piece, and then I need to make two sleeves. Um, so this is a... It's been working up nicely, but it's also pretty simple because this is really, don't think, uh, it's just double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, all the way to the end of the row, turn. Uh, of course, until you get to the decreases and soon that will be increases. So I need to keep that in mind. But with the exception of that, it's been really smooth sailing, uh, really has um, been easy to work with. That said, I do not want to frock this yarn because it is a fussy. It's going to be a pain in the beep to frock. Um, I would say the rear. 
Um, so yeah, I do really not want to frog this if I can prevent it. So of course for this, I also have a little note where I'm writing down exactly what I've done. So I know um, that it is becoming uh, the right in the end. Um, so yeah, it's it's nice and it feels it, this is it also feels soft even when worked up it feels really nice. So I'm looking forward for my new sweater. The only downside is I decided to make a hand wash only sweater um, and I do really like my washing machine. Um, but you know, I'll be all right probably. The last thing we should quickly discuss um, is, of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell um, to get notified when I post new videos. Right now, I do have a giveaway running. Um, it's my 1000 subscriber milestone giveaway. Thank you very much for being so many that's joined my Yanni community. Um, and if you are new here and you're still watching, thank you for hanging around. Um, what I wanted to say is I want to start a new project and a part of it is just to kind of de-stash a little bit. I do have some yarns that I could easily de-stash. Um, that is some Chanel yarns. You saw them um, in my Salt Mustache 2024 part two a video, which I had this week, Monday. And that's these uh, budget Chanel yarns. And I only have these two left and they are open skeins. So I want to basically make amigurumi um, with these so I can get them used up. Um, I do have, um, sorry, I do have some um, old um, tails, like, you know, when I weave in ends of yarns and I cut the yarns, etc. I do have some old of this. I would use that for filling. I'm probably going to make, I think, a turtle and see how much I left afterwards. Maybe I'll make a ball with what's left, a ball as in since off. Uh, just like a, a friendship ball. Um, and these I'm probably going to donate um, to a good course. Um, um, to a crisis centre in Denmark. The crisis centre um, takes in um, families. Um, for example, this can be women that experience uh, domestic violence and um, take their children and themselves to safety from their husbands. Um, it could in theory also be, I guess, men experiencing domestic violence from, from women, even though that is not something you hear of that often. Um, sometimes when they do leave, they need to leave really in a go and quickly because of fear of um, what their partner could do to them, um, because they don't want them to leave, of course, yet they do um, subdue them pretty heavily. Um, and therefore, sometimes there are kids here that leaves everything and they might not already have a lot um, and of course they might want some toys so that's my thinking right now that that's what I want to make um, because the filling I'm gonna fill in is also a little bit like I'm not sure like it's gonna be unspecified yarn and content um, and if I don't have enough yarn ends I do have some polyfill I can fill in that's my thinking for these projects um, um, right now um, and maybe um, I need to find a similar place here in the Netherlands that takes such donations um, but yeah my my parents are coming in April to visit me so it's gonna be really really nice um, and therefore it would be nice maybe to have a few things done before they're here so they can take them with back and that's a wonderful way of getting these two yarns de-stashed from my yarn stash um, to clear it out a bit that's pretty much it for now. I will say happy crafting and uh, take care and stay healthy until I see you again. And uh, yeah, um, I'll tempt you so far now to say on Monday we will have the next Sort My Stash uh, video coming out. That is part three and we are going to start to dive into all my Stanley yarns and Stanley cakes. So uh, stay tuned for that. And of course, on Wednesday, we are going to draw the winner of my massive celebration milestone uh, giveaway. Um, so if you haven't entered that yet, um, do enter it. Um, yeah. And, uh, if you want to watch more of my content, check out my videos up here. Take care and happy crafting. Bye.